let's look at the next one. Next one, so called spreading. Spreading is a little bit easier to achieve than hedging. Uh, why is that? Because it's, it's possible for you to find two things that are not highly correlated. Okay, and uh, let's go there first. So that you can see I have GE stocks, too high for GE, IBM. It, this is about the right number. Um, I, what I did is basically I make sure they have zero correlation. Just two things have nothing in common. Mm, for example, in stocks, maybe you're looking at a stock in healthcare. The other one may be in video game, or even further, maybe in agriculture fertilizer. Okay, now these two businesses are probably not very highly correlated, so you may be able to achieve spreading a little bit cheaper. Uh, however, most people still have to pay something if you want to hold a diversified portfolio. Either you buy a mutual fund, or you buy. A ETF that is diversified, and uh, the management fee you pay on this kind of portfolio are the cost for achieving diversification. Okay, that's about the cost, but uh, let's look at these examples. Now I have four events, four different events. Each of them have a quarter percent of a chance to appear. Okay. In event one, GE and IBM can both achieve 120. In event four, they can both achieve 100. In event two and in event three, they have the opposite uh, outcomes, right? In event two, GE has 120 and IBM get 100. In event three, GE got 100 and IBM got 120. So in event two and three, we have opposite outcomes. In event one and four, we have uh, outcomes in the same direction. So end up what I have, basically, uh, you know, half of the time they move together, the other half of the time they move in the opposite direction, then I have a correlation of zero. Okay. Still, both of them have standard deviation. I'm still calculating the population standard deviation here. Okay. And... Uh, that means, uh, here I'm, again, still taking the average because the probabilities are the same. All, all of uh, the four outcomes have a 25% chance to, to appear. So I'm still taking the average a shortcut. Otherwise, you need to use the probability to weight each outcome and then take the sum. That's the weighted average of outcomes. That's the expected value. Okay. What I have here is basically, again, the same situation as I have in the hedging example. For each individual stock, you can have an expected value of 110, but either of them give you $10 of standard deviation. You can get something above 10, something below 10. Okay, but again, uh, I don't want the standard deviation to be so large. I don't want to be uh, having the possibility to deviate from 110 that much. So what I do, uh, again, I form a 50-50% portfolio. I invest a half of my initial money into GE and the other half into IBM. Now, this portfolio in event one, one, I got 120 because both stocks are 120. In event 4, I got 100, because both stocks are 100. But in event 2 and 3, I got 110, okay? In both situation, in event 2 and 3. Now, you can see, this 110, I have, what? I have 50% of chance here to achieve 110. So, uh, now I'm getting better Okay, if I hold an individual stock, I got 50% chance to get 100. Okay, here I only have 25% of chance to get 100 in my 50-50 portfolio. Of course, on the upside, uh, I'm kind of giving up a 25% chance to get uh, 120 here, but I am get back from the uh, 110, right? Uh, on the other hand, I 
kind of lower the chance to get a 100 by getting this second one 10, if you think that way. So, uh, these outcomes, again, I calculate the uh, population standard deviation. You will see, now its standard deviation is smaller than this 10 here, right? That's basically saying, uh, for a 50-50% portfolio, I have what? I have smaller standard deviation. Uh, my portfolio value is safer. And uh, in these numbers, you can see I got more chance, 50% of chance to get this expected value, right? And uh, I got a lower chance to get into 100. Of course, I also kind of give up a little bit on the upside, but um, in general, I'm, you know, get more chances to get 110, the expected value. And I reduce the standard deviation my, of my portfolio. So that's another way. If possible, if the uh, two uh, stocks or two f the payoffs of two financial instruments, they, they are not highly correlated, it is for possible for me to reduce the risk in my portfolio. Another good example in diversification is uh, say you you should not really hold a lot of uh, stocks of your employer. What if the employer went bankrupt and uh, you may possibly lose your job from your employer as well, right? You will lose your retirement saving and uh, labor income at the same time. That's not a diversification, right? So uh, you want to diversify your retirement portfolio. You want to invest in other business. Uh, to uh, achieve diversification. Maybe, yeah, your employer is not doing well, but your stock may thrive because it's other business, not your employer's business. Um, so that's the two ways to manage your risk. Hedging is possible if only if you have exact opposite payoffs and it can be uh, expensive because the opportunity is rare. And when you actually have that kind of opportunity, it's usually constructed a financial product. That means they are expensive. Uh, spreading uh, is achievable uh, at a cheaper price, uh, but still uh, depend on really whether the stocks or financial instrument can really be not so much correlated. Okay. Uh, if you observe your portfolio stocks really move in the same direction more often than you have expected, prob probably you, you need to uh, change your holdings a little bit.